Hi, I'm Steve Levine, and you're joining me in my recording studio. And for today's demonstration, we're going to look at the aspects of recording an acoustic kit and re-triggering the samples with BFD. I do like to prefer, wherever possible, to use a drummer and capture a natural performance rather than using raw programming. And for the purposes of this demonstration, as you can see, we've used very, very simple miking. There's just one microphone on the top of the snare and on the bottom, just one mic on the front of the bass drum, we've even left the skin on, single mic on the tom-tom and single mic on the floor tom, stereo overhead just to capture everything and a separate hi-hat mic. But what you will notice is I've got drum triggers on the main element. Now the reason I like taking drum triggers is that it supplies a very sharp square wave pulse which makes it very very easy to re-trigger. You can do it with the microphone alone but if the drum part's quite busy you tend to get quite a bit of spill on some of the other microphones which makes re-triggering somewhat more complicated. Superb, excellent. So here's a rough mix of the actual drums and bringing in the overheads. I've made little icons of the audio tracks and this is just purely for me as a reference because very often when you've got a big project by labeling and iconizing things it makes your eyes go to the track much, much quicker and it saves a bit of time. So very quickly, kick drum image, snare drum image, and the triggers, which are still audio tracks, I've just put an icon of the square wave. And what I'll quickly do is I could colour those as well, just to make my life a bit easier. So I could colour those with, say, a, a red colour, just so that I'm seeing them slightly differently from the main thing. If you look at the screen, you can see the main transients for the kick, but you can also see all of the little bits in between. So if I was using BFD to trigger those, these would be false triggers, which obviously I don't want. Whereas you can see how clean the actual trigger track is. So just for those that were unfortunate enough to have not recorded a trigger, here's how you do it. Open the waveform editor, and I'm using Logic, but the process is very similar in many other forms of software. And essentially we're analyzing this audio and we're isolating the main transients from there. Now in Logic there's two or three ways of doing it and you have this thing called audio to MIDI groove template or audio to score, both of which create a MIDI track. So if you were to do audio to groove template you'll see that by setting the threshold to a certain level you will get main triggers here and all the bits in between. The higher the level, oh by the way we don't want quantizing on so I'm just taking that off. So you'll see that it's first go pretty much got them but it has given you these false triggers so what I would have to do by hand is take out those false triggers by just clicking on them that's how you do it so you set a threshold that works and if I change the threshold you'll see that more or less more triggers come depending on how we set the threshold so if I move the threshold up high because there's a big difference with the transient versus the little uh, snare spills it is actually pretty good at doing it but you will find probably at certain points in the song there will be some false triggers and you'll need to get rid of those. But there's your, your triggers. Uh, I'll cancel that. But then conversely, if we look at the same on the trigger track, it's virtually perfect. There's, there's no ghost notes at all. So to, to select the same thing, bam, it just does it first go because everything is perfect. So what I will do is create that and I'll just simply go use and that now in Logic will create a separate track which has got all of the note information that I need. So we've created the trigger track. Again for housekeeping I'm just going to give it a colour just for me. I'll maybe make this uh, a bright blue colour. So first up we can either load an individual kit or just the elements. So for example as I'm not sure exactly what sound I'm going for on this I might just go for you know, a standard bass drum and here you can see you can go kits, individual drums. So let's you know, take the very first one that's there and I'm just going to load that into that slot. As I change the velocity, so it will have a direct impact 
on the sample. Now that was, she played a medium groove at a medium tempo, so I don't really need the slamming sample, so I'm just going to find, I can hear myself where, where the point is. So let me try it like that. The other great thing about BFD is I've got total control over the room sound. So for example, if I pull these down like this, I can create a super dry sound or I can create quite an ambient sound like that. The other thing I can do, because I've got multiple channels on my desk, I can actually bring the BFD out of a separate output. In this particular example, I'm only using the BFD as a stereo out, but for those that are power users of BFD, you'll notice that there is the option, when you load it in, of having a multi-output version, which means that rather than just a stereo output, you can route through your workstation BFD to multiple outputs. And that's very handy, particularly if you mix in the box and you want to for example, um, just compress the room mics and have those on a, on a subgroup. That's a, a fantastic way of doing it. But for this example, we're just using the stereo output. But I'm routing it to two separate channels on my mixing console. And I'll just turn that up over here. The other thing that's um, of a great advantage doing it this way for me is it means I can very, very quickly check the phase. Phase is really, really important. All the BFD samples have been recorded beautifully and have been recorded correctly in phase. But there's no guarantee those are in phase with your recording, so it's well worth checking that. A quick way of checking, if you're not familiar with phase, would be to just record a bit of that. I'll just quickly bounce down that track, which will now create an audio track of this MIDI information. And the quick way of checking that phase is if I zoom in really hard, like so, I can check the phase of my natural recording versus the phase of the BFD recording. And it's looking like it's pretty damn good, actually. So we're lucky there. OK, so here's a brief recap. If you remember, we took triggers of the bass drum and the snare and created MIDI tracks of both those. And I assigned BFD3 samples to those two tracks. Now, I've just spent a few minutes going through the sounds because I wasn't sure exactly which ones to use. So I've settled on a bass drum from the BFD3 standard library. So this is what it comes with. And the one that I've chosen, as you can see from the description, is the Mapleworks Custom Kick Felt. And that seems to suit the track really well. I've chosen a snare drum, again, from the BFD standard library, but a different one. And this particular snare I've chosen that works well with the track is the Tama Tempesta snare and that's got with the snares on. So those are my two samples that I've chosen because I'm only replacing the kick and the snare in this particular example. As you can see, you could replace everything and add loads of extra things. Regarding the MIDI tracks, I've just spent a few moments making sure that the velocities were right to suit the actual samples that I've chosen. And just as a final piece of housekeeping, I was looking at the snare drum itself. So if I open the, if I open the snare drum MIDI and I'm just looping where Sean did a fill. So there's the audio here of the fill. And if I just solo her snare drum. So that's the snare. So that's the natural snare. And I've just looped that. There's the waveform, just for those that want to see the waveform going through. There we are. And I've replaced or re-triggered that with this snare drum. Now, just as I've used, you'll notice I've used a single instant of BFD. So I can just, while I'm editing, I can either turn down the bass drum there, or I can mute it, or I could solo there. Because it's like a full mixer. So by soloing, that works really well. There's the snare on its own. And what I'm only interested in at the moment is checking my velocities with the fill. So I could just solo the snare, for example. Now, what I'm going to look at here is that fill. Now, one of the great things with BFD is there's multiple samples. You can see that I've selected the various samples with the level. But this last note in the fill, actually, if I look at the keyboard, you can hear that you've got the snare, which I'm using. There's a little drag, but there's also a rim hit. 
So I'm going to actually change that to the E, which will give me the rim hit just on that one beat. So I'm just move that up to there. So now when you hear the fill, and I might actually even try it on that one as well. See, just to see how it sounds. Now that sounds pretty good to me. What I might do also is change the velocity of that last one, just move that up a little bit, and possibly take this one down as it's a little earlier in the fill, like that. Quite happy with those, I think. Maybe move that one up another notch. Because these are so multi-layered, you can literally, by changing the velocity, just a few increments, maybe from say 100 to 112, depending on the sample, the crossover point will give you a totally different sample. And that sound, particularly in a case like this, where it's a very natural drum sound that I'm going for. I'm not going for an electronic sound. So I want to have some variance. Now that sounds pretty good. The other thing that is fantastic is you'll notice we're listening to the two snare drums together. They're absolutely rock solid. There's no flamming or anything. Now unsolo that in the track. I'll quickly bring our bass drum back in. And if I go to the mixing console, I can very easily, that's what the natural drums sound like. That's the mix of them, or the BFD alone. And I could even have the BFD with, say, just her hi-hat. And the overheads, like that. So the very next thing I would like to do would be to decide whether I'm going to keep the BFD live as an instrument and maybe change things later. Or if I'm going to be very brave and go, you know what, I'm really happy with that kick and snare and I'll just print those as audio tracks. The other thing that I could also do with BFD is I could print the dry and the ambient separately because just let me give you an example of how good the ambience is on these samples. If I move them down, That's a very dry sound, very similar to the sound that I actually recorded myself. But as I creep in the ambience and the overhead mics, it can have a huge impact on the way that I perceive the sound. So, so for me, I might decide perhaps to just switch the, and you can switch them off here in one go like that. I might switch those off, record the drums dry on two tracks, and then switch the sources off and record just the ambience. That would give me two mixing choices. First of all, I've got total control over my balance of kick and snare, but more importantly, I've got control of my room mics or the BFD room mics, and I could perhaps compress those in the mix. And for those that know, compressing room mics really adds to the sound and can make the sound very exciting. In this demo track, we haven't even got a song, so it is just a drum track, but it might be that, for example, if I had quite a anthemic chorus by compressing the room mics I'll give a lift to the drum track as well as perhaps all the vocals come in. So there you have a very brief example of what BFD3 can do. It's immensely powerful and I'm only literally scratching the surface of, of all the different sounds and all of the different ways that you can use it to enhance your pre-recorded drum tracks. It's worth remembering that I've used some triggers to get my very very clean MIDI sources in order to trigger. But triggers are really, really inexpensive. You can pick them up for under a pound and they will certainly do the job. So I've finished editing and I've now printed the audio of BFD3 onto four separate tracks. So that's a dry snare drum and the ambience, the dry kick and the ambience of the kick. And I've brought them up on channels here. Now I'm balancing the kick here, the wet and the dry, and the snare wet and dry here. So now I can pr play the multi-track and bring in the additional BFD3 recordings and check the balance. So here's what it sounds like without enhancement. Here's what it sounds like with enhancement. So much better. You can almost not tell where one ends and one begins, which is exactly the point. If I was to only have the snare drum, it sounds fantastic adding that with Sean's natural snare and the kick just brings the whole thing alive. And it's worth remembering that since I've got the dry and the ambience as separate audio tracks, I can process those still further should I want to. 
and in these channels here I've still got the original MIDI so if I decide actually I need a third snare drum added I could run a separate MIDI again because I've got my triggers all ready to go and bring in a separate snare or indeed if I wanted to perhaps bring in just a snare on the choruses of the song I've got my channels here that I can do that. And what's so great about that is you just can't hear what we've done. As in, it doesn't sound like a mess. It just sounds like the best recorded drum sound. And that, I think, is a testament to how good the quality of the sounds of BFD3 and also the editing of all those sounds. Because don't, don't forget, someone has had to edit all those sounds to make that so easy for you to use. <laughs> Reading on the bus was not for me I couldn't focus on the things I meant to see So to go walk around the block Fill my head with what you said Now those faces breathe inside me on my way Come on my legs, I thought that we were friends Now I'm sitting here toe-tapping every bend Took so long to pick my dress That boy did I almost forget that I needed this to get me through the day It's just another cat 